Hey guys, what's up? Gray here and welcome back to my mono game dev series. Today I will be showing you how to create a new class called player. You will be able to add everything to your player in this new C sharp class. Depending on what kind of character you have also depends on this file. For instance, if the character is like the last tutorial where it was a car, which means that it does not move like a human character would. For now, I'll just show you the basic character movement. And in the next episode, I will show you how to make the car class, which will have more advanced movement code. All right, we're back in my mono game project. And to start off, we're just going to want to make a new class, which I'll make a folder. So you're going to click on your main project and uh, hit add new folder. And we're going to call this sprites. So all of our sprites will just go in here. So we'll add a new class and call it sprite.cs. And then we'll also create another class called player player.cs perfect so basically sprite is just going to be the main class this is a class that all sprites will inherit which will give it the necessary code for animations and collisions and whatever you decide you could write most of the code in the player class because that's what this episode is for today but um we don't have to we could do it what we're going to do is uh sprite So the reason why we can write everything into sprite and it will just carry over to player is if we use the sprite uh, class like this, it'll actually make this as a blueprint and it will show everything that's in sprite as a player, um, which I'll get more into detail in a bit. Let's just start this off the class sprite. We're going to want to actually start with a new variable. Okay, I'm going to copy these and move them over so that we have all of the X and A uh, namespaces that we need. And now we can continue. Okay, so variables. Now this can get very long and extensive, however you want to do it. Some variables I have in the sprite class and others I'll have in the player class. But for the most part, they're all in the sprite class because all the sprites are going to have to inherit these different states. So uh, we're going to start with a protected keyboard state. Let's go our current key. There we go. And also protected keyboard state. Oh. Previous key. This will tell what was just pressed on the keyboard. And then this one will tell what is being pressed down right now. After that, we'll need the position of our sprites. So public uh, vector two, oh, vector one. Uh -huh. And just call this position. All right, next we can do a little bit customization. We'll just do color. color. Um, equals color dot white. I explained this in the last episode. If it's just white, then it's the basic color. If you do red, it'll change it to red or blue and so on. After that, we can add um, a public float, which is for calculating the speed, which uh, we have to initialize to zero so that it is already set to a number and it can change later. All right, and it'll help it move properly. Um, and then lifespan to show some health for our character, which we'll get more into detail later, but we'll, we might as well add this in right now. Um, plus it could also be for other things than just the character. And lastly, if the player dies, it will be removed. So we have to check if we public uh, bool is removed equals false. So if they die, then of course it would be removed. The last thing we're going to want to do is a public sprite. We're just going to pass in texture 2D, store texture. Oh wait, oh, we just want normal texture. And then some bracket. Oh, whoa brackets and I'm just going to set underscore texture equals texture texture of course all right um oh yeah because we actually have to define texture in here um, protected texture to the underscore texture 
Perfect. Okay. We add this for basic collision. And then we need public virtual void update method, pass in the game time. Game time. And our list of sprites. Okay, once we have this, okay, we don't need to do anything in here because we've already uh, set everything else up in the sprite class for uh, spawning in the actual textures and all that. Um, but we will need public override. So override would override the sprites. So since it inherits from the sprite class, uh, we're overriding the update method here. Game time, game time, list, sprite, 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 okay, and boom. So that should be about good for that. We can add in the movement. We can actually, in here, we can set the position, so if we want position, equals new vector two and we'll do like uh 30 40. perfect and so that'll give it the position and speed equals 5f oh equals perfect so then we can also do in the update we'll do the move and outside of the move, we'll make the move update. And uh, using what we learned in the last episode, we can just toss this in. And it has the movement of three. So I've added a few variables here, just a, a position, a texture, and the screen width and height. In the game one, you can actually set screen width to the preferred back buffer width and the screen height to the back buffer height. Uh, right here in our project, I'm just going to add a new folder and call it models and then add a class to this and call it input. input. So to actually link this up to the game.1, we're going to do the same thing for sprites, just using my mono game dot models. I can type it models. So now it'll use the input into this file, um, which we can actually use both of these here in the player. And input doesn't really need them actually. Uh, input can actually take in the rest of these. Here it is. Player models. 
Sprite just needs this one. Okay, save, 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 save. So now that all that is how we like it. All right, in the input, we can actually make this a public class. And we're going to want to do public keys up, which will be get and set. And then we can just copy this a couple times. So we'll do up, down, left right and then if we want shoot if we ever have like a, a gun or bullets whatever we can add shoot so right here we have the sprite making underscore texture into a texture and the rectangle which says if there's no texture then a new rectangle will be there and if not then it will just throw the exception unknown sprite update we can have empty and in the draw we're gonna draw the sprite batch this is actually wrong. We need just Sprite. So everything's working. We just need to figure out how to print this character in. We'll just add in basic screen width and height. And then when we want to draw, it's going to be for each ver for each Sprite in the Sprites array, we're going to draw the Sprite batch. Now we can save and run, and everything should work. Yeah, so there we go. We start down there, and now we can move around. So that is the player class, as well as the sprite class. In the next episode, I will go over the car class and give it some sort of rotation so that it can turn and drift and act like a car instead of a player. Obviously, this would just be like a sprite player character. Not a car, but I'm just using a car as an example for now. In the next episode, it will make a little bit more sense. If you did enjoy, please drop a like. I'll have more content coming soon. As I said in my last video, I am in school, and so I'm trying to do my best to upload. But stick around. I will have more content for you soon. Thank you all for watching, and have a nice day.